This is the video demonstration for bonds. And in this video, I'm going to work the solution to example number two. Example number two involves the Baxter Company. And they've decided to issue the following bond. They're going to sell a $50,000 20-year bond bearing 8% interest. The interest payments are to be made semi-annually. And the current market rate for a similar bond is 6%. Under requirements, the first requirement, they want us to determine the issue price for the bond. That's going to involve a present value calculation. Then they want us to prepare the journal entry to record the issue of the bond. And then we're going to do the journal entry to record the first semi-annual interest payment, assuming straight line amortization. Now in order to do this, we want to take a look at this bond and familiarize ourselves with this information. It is a $50,000 bond, so that's the principal. The time span is 20 years. Notice that there are two interest rates, 8% and 6%. We're going to use both of those rates in different ways. The 8%, that is the contract rate because it says bearing 8%. The 6% is the market rate. And we have to take note of this. The interest payments are to be made semi-annually. And remember, we talked about this in our video lecture on bonds. Some bonds, the interest are paid annually. Sometimes they're made semi-annual payments. So, you know, it just depends on the circumstances. So you always want to make sure that you are aware of that because since this is semi-annually, it's going to affect our calculations a little bit. Now, in order to do this first part, I want to calculate the present value of the bond. So the first thing I want to write down or type down is my principal, which is $50,000. That is the principal amount of the bond. Then the second thing I want is the amount of each interest payment. Now to calculate this interest payment, I'm going to have to calculate this and then I'm going to have to do a little bit of manipulation to this number. Now the contract rate on this bond was 8%. So 50,000 times 0.08 because the decimal equivalent of 8% is 0.08. That means that every year the bondholders are entitled to $4,000. But remember it said semi-annual payments. That means the payments are made twice a year. So even though they're supposed to get $4,000 every year, they're actually only going to get half of that in each payment. So they're going to get $2,000 with each payment. So remember that extra little step there. You have to do that anytime it's a semi-annual bond. So we have these two amounts. Now the 50000 that's the principal, I will pay that out once at maturity. The $2,000, i am going to pay that every six months for 20 years. So that's a recurring amount. Now next to these two numbers, I want to put some present value factors. To do that, I'm going to have to use my present value tables. Now, like I said, the 50000 is a one-time payment. The 2000 would be a series of payments. So this is going to be present value of one. This is going to be present value of an annuity. So to do this, I need my tables. Now, these tables are available in the textbook, and they're also available on our class website. But I've just pulled up the table for present value of one. Now, what I want to figure out here is what interest rate do I want to use and how many periods? Well, when we use our tables, that's when we want to use our market rate of interest. Now, our market rate of interest in this problem was 6%, and the time span was 20 years. So my first instinct would be to go to the 6% column and go to the 20th period. But I actually can't do that. And the reason is this is a semi-annual bond. So remember, I've got to manipulate things. So if it's 6% for the whole year, for half the year, it would be half that or 3%. So I want to actually use the 3% column. So that's very important. It's half of the market rate. And then I want to double up on my time periods because think about it. If I have to make an interest payment every six months for 20 years, I'm going to make 40 payments. So what I want is the 3% column, and I want to go down to the 40th number. 
So at line 40, in the third column for 3%, the present value factor is 0 0.3066. So I'm going to type right here 0 0.3066. That's the present value of one factor that I'm going to use there. Now for this other number, I'm going to have to use a different table. For this one, I'm going to use present value of an annuity. But again, I want the 3% column, and I want to go down to the 40th number. So the 40th number in that column is 23.1148. So 23.1148. So those are my two present value factors. Now, once I have those, the rest of this is going to be pretty easy. I'm going to get that 50,000 there. I'm going to simply multiply it by the present value factor. So the present value of that is 15,330. Then I'm going to grab that 2,000, and I'm going to multiply that by this factor. The present value of that is 46,229.60. And then I'm simply going to add these two numbers together and I get 61,560. So that is the answer for part one. That is both the present value and the issue price of that bond. Now one thing that I would like to point out is that when you do these types of calculations, the actual mathematics of it are very simple. All you're doing is just multiplying a couple of numbers together. Really the most challenging thing is simply using those tables and being so careful to make sure that you use not only the right table but the proper percentage and the proper time period. If you make a mistake on that it's going to throw off everything on the problem. Now one way to double check this is notice that the answer that I got is 61,560. That's quite a bit higher than 50,000 and really I expected that. And why did I expect that? Well, if you look at the information given, the contract rate on the bond is 8%. The market rate's only 6 Well, remember, we talked about this in our video lecture on bonds. And I said then, if the contract rate is more than the market rate, it will be a premium bond. Think about it. If this bond pays 8% and other, market, other bonds out there on the market are only paying 6 Everyone wants to buy this bond, so we can charge a premium price. So that is why the answer that we see there is actually higher than 50000 Now the reason I'm pointing this out is that if you accidentally made a mistake and used the wrong table, something like that, chances are you're going to get an answer lower than 50000 And if that happens, that will be a red flag to help you realize you accidentally used the wrong charts. So it's always good to go back and look at that and double check. But ultimately, that is going to be the issue price of the bond. Now, for our journal entries. On part two, they wanted us to do the journal entry to issue the bond. When we sell the bond, we're going to receive cash, so I'll debit cash. How much cash am I going to receive? Well, we just calculated it. We said it would be sold for $61,560. So I'll debit cash for $61,560. Now, I'm going to skip a space and go down here and do the bond part. Remember, bonds are a debt security. It's a liability. One of these days, I'm going to have to pay the money back. So this is a liability called bonds payable. But I'm only going to use 50000 because that is actually the principal face value of the bond. So you see now how I have a, a problem here. The journal entry is not balancing. And on the credit side, I need another 11560 to make it balance. So what is that? Well, that is the premium on the bond. Remember, this bond was sold at a premium. So that's the way that works. Now, occasionally, you also see discounted bonds. If it had been a discounted bond, then we would have debited discount instead of credited premium. So these are just little differences that you look for whenever you have to do these types of entries. But that completes part two. That's the journal entry to issue the bond. Now the third part, they want us to do the journal entry to show the first payment of interest and it said that they use straight line amortization. Well, when we pay this interest, that's an expense to us. In fact, it is a bond 
interest expense. So I'll just debit that expense account for bond interest expense. Then I'll skip a space and credit cash because I actually pay my interest payments with cash money. Now how much am I going to pay on this interest payment? Well remember we figured that out. We said the interest payment was 2000 So this is going to be 2000 Now this bond interest expense, that's going to be the final piece of the puzzle. Before I can do that, I've got to amortize my premium. Now we have to get rid of that premium. And notice that right here, the premium is a credit. So if I want to get rid of something that's a credit, how do I do that? By debiting. So I'm going to debit the premium. Now how much am I going to debit the premium for? Well remember it said that they practice straight line amortization. So think about it. I'm eventually going to make 40 interest payments because it's every six months for 20 years. So I have 40 opportunities to slowly get rid of that premium. So I'll take that premium of 11560 and divide that by the 40 periods. And rounded, that's about 289 So that's how much I'm going to amortize the premium. So the final missing piece of this puzzle is the bond interest expense. And to be honest, that's just a plug figure to make the journal entry balance. And in this case, the difference there is about 1711 so that completes the journal entry to both make the interest payment and at the same time to amortize the bond premium. And that completes the solution for this bond example.